not switched on either. Okay, there we go. A very typical um, verse to use at this time. Many people have used it around Christmas. Many churches use it. But maybe something you don't know about this this verse or even this book uh, or this particular time when uh, Jesus was born. This is really through the eyes of Joseph. So Matthew writes this account, uh, this part, and it's actually about Joseph and how he feels about things, how he doesn't. He's not sure about what's going on and about what God has done. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, accusations in his mind about what uh, Mary has done. And so he's in a, a kind of doubt, uh, but he's still, he's still very honouring. He honours Mary in it, and we'll go through what uh, that looks like. But it's definitely told through the eyes of jo- uh, Joseph, who struggled uh, in this time. And, and probably a good message, a good version, I would say, uh, for non-believers, for people who don't know, because there's a lot of struggle with understanding that Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the only thing we would resort to as human beings uh, is that it's not the Holy Spirit and she had an affair or she had a relationship with someone else. So I'm going to show you that that's obviously not true um, and show you uh, something helpful, uh, hopefully today, that maybe you haven't seen before as well. Um, so let's just have a look. I'm going to show you the verses, but what I'm going to do in this one, I'm actually going to show you a video, which uh, each section of the verse, which tells you the verses and gives you a little bit of video just to kind of help you along, which is these first verses. It's eight, Matthew 1, 18 to 19. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So this is uh, Matthew 1, 18 to 19. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. That's the King James Version you're hearing, which is why it's all swirly language of uh, privy and things like that. This will explain to you what those words mean. Uh, His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was faithful uh, to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. It's uh, good to know uh, that there's three stages of marriage in the Jewish, Jewish culture. Um, there's engagement, which I think probably speaks for itself. You know what that is. That's before marriage. And then there's betrothal. Um, And this is a sort of marriage. This is, uh, in effect, officially marriage in the Jewish culture. Uh, This made the engagement official, and the couple would be known as husband and wife. Uh, And that would last about a year. And then after that, they would then uh, be um, married. They would basically go into full marriage uh, after that. Um, The only way, then, that could be broken, as we've learned in the Bible, is, is by divorce. And Uh, disputes over what's allowed, what's not allowed, um, rages on in the Bible, as it did. Many people trying to make excuses for divorce and all sorts of stuff. Uh, Jesus made a way uh, for that to happen in in particular circumstance. But uh, we know that if if Joseph is able to take this option, we know that there's a sense that he doesn't believe necessarily that the Holy Spirit has done what he has done and, and given Mary a baby. So he was looking to divorce her. And in the time of Mary and Joseph, I think just as today, this virgin birth would have uh, and is difficult to believe for many people. Um, Mary's integrity, Mary's own life would have been at great risk. People not accepted for this uh, behavior had it been um, having a relationship with someone else while she was betrothed to Joseph. Uh, it's it's frowned upon today, maybe not so much, uh, unfortunately. Maybe that's uh, probably less so today, but certainly then it would have been seen as uh, entirely uh, 
terrible thing to do. She would have been maligned. We've seen people in the Bible, actually, who are maligned and rejected, who then have to effectively try and find a husband in order to survive, because there was no way at that time many women could actually earn a living and make money. So there was a sense that people who had gone through similar situations where men mostly actually had divorced women under, um, mean, under reasons that were not right by the law, right by Jesus, right by God, uh, and, and kind of made it up uh, to some degree as well. So her life would have been at risk, so she, she had to remain steadfast. She had to remain faithful to her law. She had to, she had to trust that he knew what was happening and going to happen. Uh, because there was there was more going on than uh, Mary than the risk to Mary's own life, and and to kind of put away her insecurities, her struggles, and to say, but I still trust God. Uh, that's that's one of those that, that must be the most toughest things, especially in that environment, when she knows that if these rumours, these things that weren't true, kind of made uh, got out, people would make their own version of these things and say. Uh, yeah, she's uh, no good. She's no good. And so she would be maligned entirely in society uh, and, and rejected in a, in a sense. But she had to understand there was more going on. The saviour of the world is to be born. A saviour who without, we would be paying the consequences for mankind's sin against God. We would be not even sitting here today had it not been for God. And what that doesn't mean, if I explain it very quickly, is that it doesn't mean that there's a universalism. Unless you believe in Jesus, you're not saved. You're only being held by grace at this time. Everyone is held by grace uh, to actually enter the kingdom of God, to actually be a son and daughter of the great high king. Uh, needs belief, trust in Jesus, know that he is king, that he died and rose again for our sins and paid the price. Uh, at the moment, there's a pause. That's what we call grace. So there's a pause on consequence, there's a pause on judgment until uh, that time comes. And then we will have to answer, all of us, uh, Christian or not, uh, at the seat of the king. The difference for Christians is that we will have uh, the best lawyer in the universe defending us. And he will win because he's already won. And so we, we, we trust in him that he has the best argument for us, that we're no good and he is everything. So we had to have a saviour that could take the consequence of sin. Uh, no other person could do that, only God himself. So Jesus, the incarnation of God, was on a cross and died for our sin. No other human being, as it were, could ever take the cost of that sin. In fact, they would die and be judged and most likely go to hell. So actually, the only person who could take judgment, who could take sin, the cost of People's sin was Jesus Christ, who is, had to be God. And where would we be without a Spurgeon quote? Uh, there was no other way of his being born. For had he been a, of a sinful father, how should he have possessed a sinless nature? He is born of a woman, that he might be human, but not by man, that he might not be sinful. Being just a man, Joseph knew that if Mary had been unfaithful to him, it would be impossible to go through with marriage. So he's, he's kind of thinking a very cultural, human level. He's saying, I can't go through with this because it's not my baby, uh, and so I have to divorce her. Yet his nature, as just a man, also did not want to make this an unnecessary hardship for Mary. He didn't want stigma to be there for her. So he made this decision to divorce her or about to divorce her quietly. And then we move on, and then we see what Joseph does. 20 to 21 uh, says this. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Yeah, Matthew 1, 20, 21 says, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, 
and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Joseph, understandably, as a uh, flawed human being like all of us, uh, was troubled by her mysterious pregnancy, her future, uh, and what he should do towards her. He was uh, immensely troubled. And even though he decided to put, he, he was deciding to put her away secretly, he was still wasn't comfortable with that decision. So we have to be careful that when we look at Joseph, what we're not doing is saying that he couldn't, uh, he was totally in doubt. There is an, there's an element of his own sinfulness, his own humanness that's getting in the way of this decision. But also now he, he knows God, he knows, he knows who God is, and there's, there's something that trou- it troubles him rather than condemns her. So he's now just kind of, he's searching in the middle of the night, he's sleeping, he's, he's trying to sleep anyway, and he's, he's trying to understand, God, what is this? Why, why has this happened uh, to me? Why has this happened to Mary? Joseph being fully informed of the facts, though, were not enough. Even as an angel stood before him, what was still required was for Joseph to make the choice to accept and believe in what he could not fully work out. So in God's grace, through the angel of the Lord, he is petitioned. The angel says, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. And this is a really uh, critical point. What's really interesting about this verse is that the angel doesn't say, I'm going to just make you accept what I say. The angel in grace, in God's grace, petitions Joseph. And the words are, the Lord be born, Joseph, son of David, which is a really important name. He's speaking of a lineage. So that's really important to Joseph too, to understand that God knew that too. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. There is still a sense of question. It's, don't be afraid. He didn't say, he didn't say you're going to do this, you're going to do this right now. Get, get out of your bed. That's it, we're done. In God's grace, he allowed Joseph to make a form of choice. We know that because he's troubled. Even if that was the case, and God wouldn't even allow Joseph to be troubled. Actually, what would happen is that God would go, no, you're just going to accept it. And bing, magic touch on Joseph's head, and he just accepts it. That's not what happens. Uh, he wants Joseph to know for himself that the Lord has done this, that the Lord is true, that the Lord exists. So what was still required was for Joseph to make this choice, accept and believe in what he could not fully work out. The name Jesus was fairly common in this day as well. Um, But for this point on, when it was mentioned, when it was said, you will name him Jesus, this name took on a whole new meaning. Now this name meant something more than just another name. Acts 4 verse 12 says, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Let's move on to our final piece of the video. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Matthew 1, 22, 25 says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They were calling him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not con- consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. As we draw this to a close, Jesus is called God with us. 
God bent down to save man. He added the nature of one of his own, one of his own creatures, one of his own creation, to his own divine nature. He accepted the weaknesses, the frailties, and dependency that we as humans experience. This was a great miracle. A great miracle that God could ha add a human nature to his own and still remain God. And so if there's a message in this very brief sermon this morning, uh, it is this. If he has come to us, then we can come to him. It is only because of Jesus that we can even utter his name, even say that we believe in him because he has made the way to do that. And so today is, is a choice for many. Today is a choice for many to not just go through the stories and go through or treat the Bible as a story, as something as comforting at Christmas time. The challenge is, will you change your life? Will you look at something different? Will you say, what's the meaning of life? Why am I here? Why is it? that all this stuff has happened? How am I able to breathe in this atmosphere? How is the universe formed so precisely that we can even be here today? And yet, of all that science, we still, for some reason, believe it's all luck. So today, we've come to remember as Christians that Jesus came and he came. He did came. He come. He's He's come and he died on the cross and he rose again. And I'll keep saying this in other, like I've done in other sermons. He has come so we may come to him. It is only because of him and it is true because of so many witnesses, because of the Bible predicting, and be careful using the predicting word, prophesying uh, and prophecy over what was to come. So today we remember this uh, and I hope we, we can remember this in uh, in our thoughts and prayers today. I'm going to play a video now. Um, I say it lightens the mood. It is a Lego movie, uh, but it is very serious, uh, and it's, um, it's just amazingly done. So I'm going to leave you with this. Before Christmas began, God's people were waiting for God's special plan, and they'd wondered for years how this plan would unfurl, till an angel appeared to a young teenage girl. Though Mary was troubled, the angel proclaimed, You found favour with God. Do not be afraid. You will conceive and give birth to a son. Call his name Jesus. The King has now come. I am the Lord's servant, she said in belief. But when Joseph found out, he was filled up with grief. For Mary and Joseph had not yet got married. What would people think of this baby she carried? An angel of God came to him in a dream and helped Joseph see it was not as it seemed. It was God's Holy Spirit that brought life within. This baby had come to save people from sin. So Joseph and Mary and baby-to-be set off to Bethlehem as was decreed. But when they arrived, there was nowhere to stay. No more rooms to be found for this babe on the way. And then soon the time came. She gave birth to a son. The long-promised king had now finally come. And they weren't in a palace, all cosy and warm. Where the animals feed was where this king was born. And while crowds in the town were all still fast asleep, there were shepherds nearby watching over their sheep. Until something disrupted the darkness of night, an angel appeared and the sky filled with light. The glory of God all around them displayed, the angel declaring, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause you great joy. The Saviour is born as a baby, a boy. The shepherds saw angels sing glory and peace and they said to each other, now let's go and see. 
they hurried to find this great king of the Jews. Then in awe and amazement, they spread the good news. Now far in the east, men most clever and wise had seen a strange star that was starting to rise. They knew that a king was the cause of this star, so they set off to find him and followed it far till it stopped at the place where the boy would be found. And in wonder and worship, they humbly bowed down. They opened their treasures. And what did they bring? But frankincense, gold, and myrrh for a king. A king who was little. A king who could cry who was fragile and feeble and one day would die. The powerful king who'd been promised for years, who would share in our suffering and take up our tears. For though he was rich, God chose to be poor. He made himself nothing so we could be sure that God is now with us. The king has come near. Good news for all people, Jesus is here.